Great, thank you, Marty. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kevin Griffin from Columbia University and the Arctic LTER. Big news at our site. Um, you're looking at a wonderful photo taken by Ruby Ann, a graduate student at Princeton, and she won the LNO photo contest with this, which uh, was really great. Also, we are uh, in the midst of our transition to ARC-7 with a new suite of cover page PIs, so exciting times for us. When it comes to spatial scaling, we have the same challenge I think many of you have, and that is how to take our observational and experimental results and scale them to the landscape and the region. So the story I want to show today deals with uh, scaling our most consistent terrestrial result, and that is when we fertilize or warm tundra plots, we see a big shift towards woody shrubs. This shift is seen in the fertilization results there at the top, but it's also seen in our control plots through time in this smaller graph here. And regionally across the Arctic, uh, scientists are reporting increases in shrub biomass. However, the best vegetation maps we have for our area only list broad categories of vegetation types, making scaling of shrub biomass tricky. So the approach we've taken is to employ LIDAR and spectral reflectance. Now, at the time we started this, LIDAR, of course, is widely used in forested ecosystems, but there was some question about our ability to detect shrub biomass with LIDAR. And so we started at the small scale individual shrubs, taking terrestrial LIDAR scans, harvesting the shrubs, building the relationship between shrub mass and the calculated volume from LIDAR. We could then scale that up with still using terrestrial LIDAR to the plot scale and ultimately using airborne LIDAR to much larger region. The uh, results here show that using a combination of spectral reflectance and canopy structure, we're able to predict shrub biomass across the region. So let me start with the successes. We were able to create a regional map of shrub biomass with uh, a significant amount of resolution. In fact, we wound up with a 20 centimeter vegetation map across our region. This uh, was a great success. It started with the ARC ob observations. We brought in new collaborators. We had great graduate students working on this. And we're fortunate in that LIDAR, airborne LIDAR will be flown uh, every three to five years through NEON above and other programs going forward. We had a collaboration through NASA that led to funding. We had help from the GIS personnel at the field station, and we had some equipment support. We did have some challenges. The first day we went out and set up our LIDAR, we couldn't find our targets. Turned out all those small dots are mosquitoes, and the, <laughs> and the mosquitoes really wreaked havoc. We lost two LIDAR units to the mosquitoes getting sucked in through the fans. We also just uh, had a tremendous amount of work, 731 field plots randomly selected to verify the results. So where does this lead us and what new insights do we have? Right back to the experimental plots, we're now trying to develop protocols to use LIDAR to monitor biomass. And you can see in the bar graph, uh, some suggestion that this will work. We're also incorporating what we're learning about structure to understand function, both in carbon uptake, as seen in this study here, and surface properties seen in the infrared. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.